Hello and welcome to the online training module on Ethics and Child Welfare Supervision. This training is made available through the Center for Advanced Studies in Child Welfare at the School of Social Work at the University of Minnesota. This training module is part of an online training effort that covers a wide range of topic areas in child welfare. In this module, I'm going to talk about ethics in child welfare supervision, including the definition of ethics and values, professional ethics, ethical issues specific to supervision and specific to child welfare, and ethical dilemmas. This module is at an introductory level and intends to provide a basic level of understanding on the topic. Future modules will go into greater depth on ethical issues related to child welfare and child welfare supervision. After completing this section of the training, you should have a broad understanding of ethical issues in the area of supervision and child welfare. People who complete this training will understand key ethical issues in the area of supervision and child welfare, and be able to use an ethical rule screen in making decisions and ethical dilemmas when supervising in the child welfare domain. In this module, I will cover the difference between values and ethics, the NASW Code of Ethics, Supervision and Supervisory Ethics, Child Welfare Supervisory Ethics, Ethical Dilemmas, and How to Use an Ethical Rules Screen. When talking about ethics, it is important to delineate the difference between values and ethics. Values are beliefs and attitudes about the world held by individuals or groups. Ethics, on the other hand, govern our conduct. Ethics are often based on values. The next few slides will explain the notions of both values and ethics in more depth, starting first with a discussion of values. There are both personal values and professional values. Personal values are values held by individuals. Personal values are strongly influenced by culture, religion, national origin, and many other contextual factors. Some values are listed on this slide. These values are family, community, confidence, honor, marriage, generosity, faith, individualism, peace, security, hard work, humility, freedom, joy, adventure, religion, intellectualism, and service. It is important for all social workers, including social workers in the field of child welfare, to be aware of their personal values, as personal values can influence how we respond to clients. Take a moment to list some personal values that are important to you. When you are ready, go on to the next page. Along with personal values, there are also professional values, which people who are affiliated with the profession hold. These are often values that have been agreed upon by a formal professional association that members of the profession can join or become affiliated with. And for some professions, to become a licensed member of that profession, you have to agree to uphold some certain professional values. For example, physicians have a value to do no harm. Ethics differ from values. Ethics govern the conduct of people or groups of people, such as a profession. Professional ethics govern the behaviors of a profession, such as the profession of social work. Philosophers distinguish between two types of ethics. There is deontological ethics and teleological ethics. Deontological ethics is focused on the means or processes. For example, deontological ethics would be more concerned with the ethics related to how a child welfare worker interacted with a family. Was the worker respectful? Did the worker value the family's own desires? Teleological ethics is focused on the ends or outcomes. For example, deontological ethics would be more concerned with the ethics related to the outcomes of the interaction of the child welfare worker with the family. Was the child made safe? Were the family's needs met? Both types of ethics are important for social work practice. The National Association of Social Workers Code of Ethics offers a set of values, principles, and standards to guide decision making and conduct when ethical issues arise in the field of social work. It does not provide a set of rules that prescribe how social workers should act in all situations. Indeed, such a list of rules would be impossible to develop. Rather, 
Specific applications of the code must take into account the context in which it is being considered and the possibility of conflicts among the code's core values. There are a variety of purposes for professional codes of ethics like the NASW Code of Ethics. The NASW Code of Ethics was designed to serve six purposes. The NASW Code of Ethics identifies core values on which Social Work's mission is based. The code also summarizes the broad ethical principles that reflect the profession's core values and establishes a set of specific ethical standards that should be used to guide social work practice. The code is also designed to help social workers identify relevant considerations when professional obligations conflict or ethical uncertainties arise. These are sometimes called ethical dilemmas. The code also provides ethical standards to which the general public can hold the social work profession accountable. The code also socializes practitioners new to the field to social work's mission, values, ethical principles, and ethical standards. Finally, the code articulates standards that the social work profession itself can use to assess whether social workers have engaged in unethical conduct. NASW has formal procedures to adjudicate ethics complaints filed against its members. In subscribing to the NASW Code of Ethics, social workers are required to cooperate in its implementation, participate in NASW adjudication proceedings, and abide by any NASW disciplinary rulings or sanctions based on it. The NASW Code of Ethics outlines six core social work values, and each value has a corresponding ethical principle. The values refer to beliefs and attitudes that professional social workers have. The ethical principles are prescriptions for how social workers should conduct their work. The first core value is service. The corresponding ethical principle is Social workers' primary goal is to help people in need and address social problems. The second core value is social justice. The corresponding ethical principle, social workers challenge social injustice. The third core value is dignity and worth of the person. The corresponding ethical principle is Social workers respect the inherent dignity and worth of the person. The fourth core value is importance of human relationships. The corresponding ethical principle is social workers recognize the central importance of human relationships. The fifth core value is integrity. The corresponding ethical principle is social workers behave in a trustworthy manner. The final core value is competence. The corresponding ethical principle is social workers practice within their areas of competence and develop and enhance their professional expertise. Supervision is a key task of social work and the Code of Ethics relies on social work supervision as one avenue for ensuring ethical practice of social workers. Kadushan, an expert on social work supervision, indicates that social work supervision is quite broad. There are three general dimensions of social work supervision. These are task assistance, social and emotional support, and supervisory interpersonal interaction. There are a number of standards in the NASW Code of Ethics that refer to supervision in the context of social work. There are standards for social workers, for social work supervisors, and for social work administrators. For social workers, the NASW Code of Ethics says that social workers should seek supervision and consultation in regards to their practice. For social work supervisors, the NASW Code of Ethics says that social workers who provide supervision or consultation should have the necessary knowledge and skill to supervise or consult appropriately and should only do so within their areas of knowledge and competence. 
Social workers who provide supervision are responsible for setting clear, appropriate, and culturally sensitive boundaries. Social workers should not engage in dual or multiple relationships with supervisees in which there is a risk of exploitation or of a potential harm to the supervisee. And social workers who provide supervision should evaluate supervisees' performance in a manner that is fair and respectful. For social work administrators, the NASW Code of Ethics says that administrators should take reasonable steps to ensure that adequate agency or organizational resources are available to provide appropriate staff supervision. Supervision is important for social work. There is much research that shows that effective supervision can lead to increased worker job satisfaction, increased worker retention, and higher quality service delivery. While rigorous studies have not yet proved the direct connection, it is quite likely that effective supervision may also lead to better client outcomes. Now that you have reviewed the NASW Code of Ethics, take a moment to list three ethical standards in the NASW Code of Ethics that you think are of prime importance for social workers and social work supervisors working in the field of child welfare. After you have listed your three ethical standards, go on to the next slide. The NASW Code of Ethics provides an ethical code for social workers in all areas of practice including social workers in both direct and community practice, as well as social workers working with children, adults, people with disabilities, immigrants and refugees, families, older people, or other groups. While the NASW Code of Ethics is very useful for understanding the values and ethics of the profession as a whole, there are some unique values of child welfare that are not reflected directly in the code. The field of child welfare has values that are shaped by the history of the profession, professional associations, advocacy groups, as well as from federal laws, such as the Americans and Safe Families Act, which has shaped the direction of the field. The values listed on this page come from the Cal SWEC Child Welfare Ethics and Values. Some other states have also come up with similar but slightly different concepts of child welfare values and child welfare ethics. The values determined by CalSWEC include protection of children, preservation of families, respect for families, respect for individuals, client self-determination, and individualized intervention. The first two values are particularly important for child welfare practice and also provide an idea of how ethically complex the field of child welfare is, as the conflicts between these values are often where child welfare workers must make difficult ethical decisions. The NASW adopted new standards for social work practice in child welfare. These standards reflect the new trends in child welfare with a focus on the best interests of a child in permanency while broadening the definition of child welfare to include many more activities beyond child protection. The NASW standards for child welfare are rooted in the NASW Code of Ethics but go beyond the Code of Ethics to focus specifically on child welfare. Use the following link to go to the NASW standards for social work practice and child welfare. Read the standards keeping a close eye on ethical responsibilities of child welfare workers and child welfare supervisors. After you've finished reading the NASW standards, go on to the next page. Ethical issues in the field of child welfare are in many ways similar to ethical issues in other social work settings, but there are also some unique issues related to the nature of the work and the policies and the environmental context of the work. Child welfare workers work in bureaucratic systems with competing demands with an ultimate goal of protecting children's lives and preserving families. Understanding how to approach ethical issues is important for child welfare workers and supervisors in order to protect children and preserve families. One way social workers are important for ethical social work practice is to assist workers in ethical decision making. Ethical decision making is a process. There are many instances in social work where simple answers are not available to resolve complex ethical issues. 
Social workers should take into consideration all the values, principles, and standards in the code of ethics that are relevant to any situation in which ethical judgment is warranted, while at the same time being mindful of one's own personal values, your client's values, societal values, cultural values, agency values, and federal, state, and local laws and policies. Social work supervisors can assist workers in making ethical decisions. In addition, social work supervisors also must make ethical decisions in their own practice of supervision. An ethical dilemma is an example of a situation in which ethical decision making is difficult. Ethical dilemmas are conflicts between two or more ethical principles or standards. When ethical principles or standards conflict, the NASW Code of Ethics directs social workers to rank order these competing principles to determine which principle is of most importance in order to make an appropriate decision. One way to help social workers make ethical decisions when one faces an ethical dilemma is to use an ethical decision-making tool. There are many types of tools that are available. One such tool is the ethical rules screen developed by Lowenberg and Dolgoff, which helps social workers to rank order competing ethical principles. When encountering an ethical dilemma in practice, they advise a social worker to determine whether principles in the NASW Code of Ethics apply to the particular ethical dilemma experienced. If two or more of the ethical principles conflict, or if the situation is not identified in the code, the social worker can then use the ethical rules screen. The rules in the ethical rules screen are to be applied in descending order. First, protection of life. Next, equality and inequality. Then, autonomy and freedom. Then, least harm. Then, quality of life. Then, privacy and confidentiality. Then, truthfulness and full disclosure. In situations in which ethical values may conflict with one another, social workers also need to identify their own values and assess the importance of these values vis-a-vis -vis others. In addition, social workers must also remember to take into account the client's values, the agency's values, and the laws of the federal, state, and local government that apply. This is one example of how to use an ethical rules screen. Let's say you've been referred to a case where a parent has an 11-year-old child with an aggressive, though very responsive type of cancer. The doctors have said that if the child does not receive chemotherapy and radiation soon, she will likely die within a year. But if she does receive treatment, she will have a 90% chance of survival. The mother, who has legal custody of her daughter, is a member of a religious group that believes in prayer for curing illnesses and is opposed to Western medicine. The father, while not having legal custody, wants his child to have the treatment. The child says that she does not want the treatment, but you, as the social worker, believes that she might not understand the gravity of her situation. This is a classic example of an ethical dilemma. There are many competing values and ethical principles in this situation, and there are also various laws that come into play. Some of the competing ethical principles in this case could involve self-determination of the parents, self-determination of the child, the dignity and worth of the child, issues of informed consent, and many others. There also are many legal issues, including laws related to freedom of religion and child custody, among others. An ethical rule screen can help the worker rank order various concerns in situations like this. In this instant, the Lohenberg uh, and Dolgoff ethical rule screen could be used to rank order the concerns. One might determine in this case that pr the protection of the child's life might outweigh the concerns for autonomy and freedom of the parents and the child. For issues as com complicated as the case described in this slide, it would be vital to gain a more complete picture of the situation before making any decisions, and it would also be important for the caseworker to seek supervision and consultation 
both within the agency as well as with other parties, such as religious leaders and medical professionals. Supervisors play an important role in modeling, coaching, and engaging workers in discussions relating to ethics and ethical decision making. You will now be introduced to four ethical dilemmas that one might encounter as a child welfare supervisor. For each ethical dilemma, write down what you believe are the conflicting ethical principles or standards involved in each scenario. You can look back to the NASW Code of Ethics for assistance in this matter. For each scenario, think about how could you use an ethical rule screen to assist you in ethical decision making. Write down how you would respond if you were the supervisor in this scenario. Pay attention to your own personal values, your supervisee's values, the client's personal values, societal values, agency policy, and the professional values and ethics of social work and child welfare. The following is the first sample ethical dilemma. The next slide will prompt you to write down which principles and standards might have influenced your decision making to ask you how you would use an ethical rules screen to help you in your decision making and to think about what you would do as a supervisor in the scenario. So here is sample ethical dilemma number one. Two deaf children have been removed from the home of their deaf parents because of neglect and have been placed in the home of a hearing foster parents who do not know American Sign Language. The children's doctor says the children would gain partial hearing if they were given cochlear implants, and your supervisee wants to re recommend these implants as she believes implants will enable the children to communicate better now with their foster parents, as well as prepare them to be productive members of society. The parents want their children to remain immersed in the deaf culture and are strongly against the implants. When you are ready, Go on to the next page to log your responses to the ethical dilemmas presented. You will be able to revisit this slide to review this case if you wish. Now that you have reviewed the first ethical dilemma, take a moment to identify the conflicting ethical principles and standards and values present. Write these down on your log. Next. Write down how you could use an ethical rules screen to assist you in ethical decision making in this scenario. See if you are able to rank order the conflicting principles using the ethical rules screen to assist you. Put a number one by the principle which you think is of most importance and then in descending order, two, three, four, five, rank order the other principles or values involved. Finally, if you were the supervisor involved in this scenario, how would you respond? When you're finished writing down your responses to this ethical dilemma in your log, you can go on to the second ethical dilemma. The following is the second sample ethical dilemma. As in the first ethical dilemma, when you're reviewing this scenario, think about your own personal values, the supervisee's values, the client's values, the agency values and policies, professional values and ethics of social work and child welfare. The next slide will again prompt you to write down which principles and standards might have influenced your decision making, to think about how an ethical rules screen would assist you in this scenario, and to think about what you would do as a supervisor in this scenario. Here is sample ethical dilemma number two. You are a child welfare supervisor in a fairly remote rural location, and there are only two other child welfare workers in your office. A 15-year-old girl in long-term foster care recently disclosed that she was pregnant and desired an abortion. Both of the social workers you supervise have told you that they are morally opposed to abortion and are not comfortable working with this teenager. When you are ready, go on to the next page to log your responses to the ethical dilemma. You will be able to revisit the slide to review the case if you wish. Now that you have reviewed the second ethical dilemma, take a few minutes to record your thoughts in your log. First, write down what are the conflicting ethical principles in this scenario. Next, think about how an ethical rules screen would assist you in decision making in this case. Finally, if you were the supervisor involved in this scenario, how would you respond? When you are finished writing down your responses to the ethical dilemma in your log, you can go on to the third ethical dilemma. We will now go on to sample ethical dilemma number three. 
An allegation has been made regarding educational neglect of five brothers between the ages of 9 and 16. None of the boys has ever been to school, and all are unable to read or to do all but the simplest math problems. The parents, both college graduates, can capably articulate their reasons for not sending their children to school. Both parents are firm believers that schools harm children by requiring conformity and believe that their children will be better moral citizens by avoiding school. The parents are also opposed to the concept and practice of homeschooling and refuse to participate in any state requirements for homeschooling parents. The boys are all well-fed, polite, and friendly. The social worker assigned to this case has come to you for guidance in this case. When you are ready, go on to the next slide. You are now ready to log your responses to ethical dilemma number three. First, Write down the conflicting ethical principles, values, standards that are present in this scenario. Then think about how an ethical rule screen could assist you in decision making in this case. Finally, if you are the supervisor involved in this scenario, how would you respond to your supervisee who has come to you for guidance? When you're finished writing down your responses, go on to the next slide. We have now reached the final ethical dilemma, sample ethical dilemma number four. As in the previous scenarios, after you're finished reviewing this scenario, go on to the next slide where you will be prompted to record your reactions to this scenario. You can always go back to this page to review the scenario if you wish. You are a child welfare supervisor in a public child welfare agency. You have a number of young caseworkers in your unit, and you know they are all active in using text messaging and social networking to communicate. One of your supervisees just invited you to be her friend on a social networking website. Curious, you view who her other friends are on the website and are surprised to recognize two of her friends as being her former clients. When you are ready, go on to the next page. It is now time to write down your reactions to the final sample ethical dilemma. First, write down what are the conflicting ethical principles in this scenario. Next, think about how an ethical rule screen would assist you in decision making in this case. Finally, if you were the supervisor involved in this scenario, how would you respond? When you are finished with your log, go on to the next slide. We have now reached the end of the module in Introduction to Ethics and Child Welfare Supervision. In this module, we have defined values and ethics, discussed and reviewed ethical issues related to supervision and child welfare, and introduced an ethical rule screen as a tool for ethical decision making. I hope you have enjoyed this module and gained an introductory knowledge to some of the ethical issues in child welfare supervision.